All right, guys. So we're here with Jason York and guess who? Nathan Guest, baby. That's who we with. Hey guys. So man, um, we're here tonight and we were actually up here just having a good time. We had, um, our youth choir practice going. So us guys decided to come up here and read God's word and understand more about him. The most important thing you could ever do in your life is understand who your creator is. God has a purpose and a plan for your life, but how do you know what that purpose of plan is if you don't even know who he is? If you're not sure what he says about your life, if you don't know what he says about like just certain topics that, you know, we may wonder and question about. I mean, it's important that we understand who our God is. And man, he is so full of grace, love and mercy. And so as we was up here reading, you know, I mean, even uh, the assistant pastor here, John, he was like, man, y'all need to cut the cameras on as the anointing is in this place. So, you know, we all looked at each other. You know, Jason, Jason, I'm ready, boy. You ready, Jason? Ready to go. You ready, Jason? Ready to go, I know Nate's ready, boy. Nate's always ready. <laughs> Nate's got that mind renewed. I promise you will hear about that in literally just a couple minutes. Okay. So with that being said, guys, we're going to be reading out the book of Hebrews and Again, we don't technically know who wrote the book of Hebrews. <coughs> Many scholars will say that they believe the apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. When you look at the style of the text, the, you know, language and all, they is, is attested to potentially Paul. But again, we don't know. But before we go on, um, this is also something that we can look at. If you don't know if you believe in Jesus or not, if the disciples were fabricating the entire New Testament, then we would obviously have, they would have made somebody up. But I just think it's a cool little nugget when they're honest about it. We're like, yep. look, we don't know who wrote this. It just actually adds another layer of honesty and integrity mm -hmm. to God and his word <clears throat> that it is true and that it is not fabricated or made up. Um, but again, we believe Paul wrote it, but we can't confirm that with reliability. So with that being said, uh, we're going to start in uh, chapter nine and verse one. And uh, which one of you guys want to pick up and start reading? Take it off, Nate. All right, uh, they, hey, guess what, baby? Yeah, you're it. Yes, let's sir. Go. Hey, if you guys don't understand the joke I'm making, his last name is Guess. <laughs> so every time I say guess what or guess who, I'm really just taking a quick little pun at him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's uh let's start at chapter nine. The first covenant between God and Israel had regulations for worship and a place of worship here on earth. There were two rooms in, in that tabernacle. In the first room were a lampstand, a table, and sacred loaves of bread on that table. This room was called the holy place. There was a curtain, and behind the curtain was a, was a second room called the most holy place. In that room uh, were a gold incense altar and a wooden chest called the Ark of the Covenant, which was covered with gold on all sides. Inside the ark was a, a gold jar containing manna, Aaron's staff, sprouted leaves, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark were cherubim of divine glory, whose wings stretched out over the ark's uh, cover, the place of atonement, but we cannot explain these things in detail now. When these things were all in place, the priests regularly entered the first room as they performed their religious duties. Uh, but only the high priest ever entered the most holy place, and only once a year. And he always offered blood for his own sins and for the sins of the people for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. By these regulations, the Holy Spirit revealed that the entrance to the most holy place was not freely open as long as the tabernacle and the system it represented were still in use. Now that's where we come into, you can boldly come before Jesus right there. And you know, that's the reason why there was a curtain there. You couldn't, you know, you were, you were, uh, you were kept out. You know, only only the high priest did. Well, sure. because it, it it wasn't freely open. Yeah. But that's what Christ did on the cross. He made yeah. it accessible and freely open to yep. anyone that believes on his name. Yeah. That's right. This is an illustration pointing to the present time. For the gifts and sacrifices that this priest offered are not able to cleanse the consciences of people who were who were bringing who who bring them. Hey, that's going to be a key point, guys. So again, it says for the gifts and sacrifices that the priest offered, we're not able to cleanse the conscience. And again, guys, we're going to address the conscience here in a minute, but I want you guys to j just to know really quick, your conscience can be free, but only through Christ. And we're going to touch on this in one second, but just that, that that's a key point I want us to uh, remember. Sorry, Nate, continue. For the old system deals only with food and drink and various cleansing ceremonies, physical regulations that were in effect only until a better system could be established. So Christ has now become the high priest over all good things that have come. He has entered that greater, more perfect tabernacle in heaven, Where which at? was 
the greater and more perfect tabernacle that was in heaven. Mm-hmm. Because what was what was here was just a was just a copy, a, a shadow, replica, not a on shadow, earth. not on earth in heaven. Yeah, in heaven, he went to the the real one in heaven. That's right. Which, like we were talking about earlier, I, I when I get there, I'm I'm going. You know, we're, we're probably going to be there anyway. Because I'll be right there with you, it. son. I'll be like, I hey, this, see it. this crazy podcast yep. we did. This is where yep. that. So uh, he uh, has entered the greater, more perfect tabernacle in heaven, which was not made by human hands and is not part of this created world. With his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, he entered the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemption forever. He Did, did he secure our redemption for a season? Forever. Forever. <laughs> forever and ever. How long is forever, Nate? A long time. Eternal. Eternity. Hey, and when you eternity. reach eternity, there's another eternity to yep. go. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and ashes of a young cow could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. Now, that's powerful. That is very powerful. Yeah. <clears throat> because, powerful. you know, your conscience can sometimes be your enemy because, you know, from things that you've done in the past, you know, you, Lord, can I, can I raise my hands? Can I, can I sing this song, Lord? Cause something I, that, that your mind won't let go. And when you renew your mind, like, like we've been saying, you renew your mind on this scripture right here. How much more will the blood of Jesus cleanse your conscience? That's How right. much more if, if the, if the blood of goats and bulls and everything else could do that? How much more would his blood? And it's like, it's like, and, and, and again, it's like what we talked about earlier and stuff. That's what was on me is, is when I first started coming back here to church, you know, through praise and worship and stuff like that, man, I, I couldn't even lift my hands. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I just had so much dead weight yep. on me, but, but through Jesus's grace and mercy and his forgiveness and stuff like that, the more I got in his word and was reading his word, the more things were breaking off of me. Yep. And now I just, I just, yep. Yep. I just worship. Yep. yep. That, that weight was me. circumcised, man. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, man, I want to touch that too, because man, and, and, and again, I'm only sharing this testimony to edify scripture. It's not to edify me, but it's to edify the word of God. So, it, I mean, we, we just read that the blood of Christ, and we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about the ultimate sacrifice, not just the sacrifice of goats and calves. We're talking about the ultimate sacrifice in Jesus. Right. It's going to purify our conscience from sinful deeds. And uh, we were just talking about worship and like, can we even lift our hands? Um, This is just going to be real and raw. Um, there was a time I came on a Wednesday night. I don't believe, uh, Jason, you you was coming to church at time, but I don't think you and Chelsea were. But um, I came on a Wednesday night and I had just messed up that same day, maybe man a couple hours before service, and it was one of those sins. I was so ashamed. I would I was around the altar, lifting my hands, and all I could think about was what a mistake I am. All I could think about was how sorry I was, and just how ultimately God is just so you know just going to unleash His wrath on me. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, but I literally heard the Holy Spirit tell me in my conscience. He said, Drake, I am worthy to be praised. You're not praising yourself. You are praising me. So don't ever allow your past. Don't allow sin. Don't let nothing stop you from praising God. Because at the end of the day, you're giving God praise and God will deliver you. Nate, I'm trying not to spoil what we're fixing to get into. No, it's all good. But Nate, can you say, I mean, you know, we have a mind. You have a, you have a spirit, a spirit. You got a soul, soul and a body. body. And see, spirit, soul, and body. And see, but when you can get your mind and your spirit attached and you can get these things connected, you know, you'll, you'll begin to see God move. And what was happening was my mind was over here, but then my spirit was in Christ Jesus, but then my mind wasn't truly there. And when your mind's not there, how can you use what you have inside Mm -hmm. of you? How can you unleash, you know, the Jesus power, the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace that God has given you? The same power that, that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of all three of us said, yes, yes, yes. the same power. Yes, yes. And if you haven't received God's grace, it can be inside of you as well tonight. You know, I mean, pause the video right now and say, God, I need more grace. Father, I need more empowerment to overcome the battle in the mind. I need you to reveal to me who you are and what you've done for me and my life so I can move forward with you through grace, power, strength, love, and joy. 
So let's Man. talk about how he how he reveals himself to to people. Now, well, hey, are, are they ready for that? Now? Yeah, <laughs> this is how this is how he reveals himself right here. This spiritual Ooh. mirror, <laughs> mm, right here. You want you want God to reveal himself to to you? Been to get real. Yes, get in, sir. Hey, get in this. Get real. Hey, it's been to get real. There's gonna be some reels made, son. <laughs> yes, sir. Get in this. Get in this word right here. And this this. If you look into this perfect law of liberty, this perfect mirror of who you are in the spirit, and you renew your mind on everything that this book says, on everything that God says you are, you are the righteousness of Jesus. It's his spirit on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. You know, my righteousness is nothing. It's a filthy rags. It's his righteousness. You can get that deep down and, and get that stirred up inside of you. You know, that, that valve that your soul is when you, you, it's a lot like when you, you stand in church and you sing, you're proclaiming with your mouth, you're singing these words about Jesus, your, your mind's on Jesus. Right. You're, you're, you're here at church. That was your will this morning. I came to church. Your right. mind, will, and emotions have lined up on Jesus. You're, you're worshiping him. You're standing there in church. You're worshiping him. Your mind's on him. You're, you know, that that's where your that's where your soul is at, and once that happens, that valve opens up, and what what is so perfect in that it spirit, flowing. it starts flowing. Yeah, that's, it starts revealing. That if you want to know the truth, the truth of the matter is, is that actually, whenever we all get in church and all our minds starts focusing on Jesus, we're praising, we're worshiping, and your all our souls have lined up, and we're singing about Jesus, and we're thanking on Him. And these 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 songs, a lot of them are scripture. You're you're singing the Bible. Yes. Yep. So when you do yep. that, what, what the reason why the atmosphere changes is because every one of our spirits starts flowing out. That's the reason why the atmosphere changes. That's the reason why stuff starts changing. You can feel it in the room yeah. when you Man, walk in. I, I tell you what, and and, and like that, I, when I'm on that skitter, man, it's I I, I turn that Bluetooth on. Mm -hmm. I turn my praise and worship on. Yep. Nathan, I get so emotional. Mm -hmm. You just, even in a skitter, you just feel the presence. Yep. Yeah. Just, I, I just repeat that one song. Yep. Yeah. Because it just, it's just it flowing. Yes. It's yep. just flowing. Man, yep. I, I just get so emotional. I pop top the skitter, just yep. lift my hands, go to, you know, worshiping yep. and stuff. It's just, yep. it feels so amazing. And see, I've always, I've always, I, I, I'm the type of person I want to ask why. How how is that happening? Why is that happening? And spirit, soul, and body answers that question. That's right. Mm, it, it, does. It, it does. It does. It unlocks it, the revelation you need yep. to understand. Yep. That's right. It it unlocks people's confusion about you know, man. They telling me I'm a new creature, but God, I'm, I, I I'm still God. I come home and I'm still dealing with the same thing that I'm dealing that I was dealing with when I came to church, before I came to church. But they got to understand that the new part of them. The, the part that passed away is, is their spirit. And now their spirit has been replaced with the spirit of Jesus. Yeah. And, and your spirit is just as pure, just as righteous, just as good as Jesus. Because it's his. It's because That's it's right. his. Yes. Not yours. That's yes. Right. It's his. And he and freely you, put it in. He freely give it to you. Yes. And when you focus, when you focus on that and you go back and you read this stuff and you train your brain on it and you, constantly bathe in it and it gets down in your soul that's when that's when that virtue that jesus had yeah that's when that healing that jesus could do the same power that raised him from the dead is, is on you? the inside of me and just like p john told us earlier jesus said greater will you do ain't that what jesus said that's exactly what he said it's, exactly it's written said. in red bro it's written in red written in red Greater will you do. So how are we going to do that? We, it's, it has to do with the perfect spirit of Christ that's on the inside of us. That's right. And we got to open that valve up and we can get people to understand this is how we do it. This is how you do this. You get in there, you get your mind settled on Jesus. You put all the worries of everything you got at home. You put all that behind Jesus and you focus on him and all that starts flowing out of you. And man, I want to touch on something too. And it's very subtle. And that's how the Holy Spirit works. You said we have to train our minds. And Nathan, I'm a football coach and we train every single day. And mm -hmm. we train because we want to win. And if you mm -hmm. want to win the battle in your mind, you have 
to train your mind with God's word. Yeah. You yeah. have to renew your mind. I promise if we took a day, a week, two days, however long, if we just stop training a, as a football team, mm -hmm. we are not going to win very many games. No. You're no. not going to win very many battles on this earth because you'll never be free. And how can you go around and preach freedom? How can you go around and worship God freely if you can't get your mind free because you're not training your mind mm -hmm. with what was said in Colossians and That's Hebrews right. mm -hmm. and all these 66 marvelous books in this yep. word? How can you move forward yep. if you're how, not training your mind? How can you go to battle? How can you go and how can you, how can you battle in your mind? When you're not prepared for that battle, you can't, you know, Paul talks about put on the whole armor. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, a lot of times we, we, you know, we've, we turn it around and we make it all this stuff and we've, we've preached it a million times this way and a million times that way, you know, but if, if that armor is the word of God, you think about when Jesus and Satan, like we was talking about the other day. Oh, Jesus we're going and, somewhere now, Jason. Jesus and we're Satan. We're going somewhere now. All right. So when Jesus and Satan were basically arguing, what see, did they Satan say? Satan was trying to even twist the scripture mm -hmm. on Jesus. Yeah. He was Satan, like, he, he was like what a did CNN Satan, trying to twist what that What did Satan thing. say, Drake? He said, it is written. Satan said, it is written. He was like, and what, how did Jesus respond? Jesus said, but it is written. But do not it test is the written. Lord your God. Yep. And, and, and other verses are in Deuteronomy. So if I'm going to be like Jesus, if we, if we're supposed to be like Jesus, We've got to train. We've got to train. We've he got to woo. have this deep. I hope I didn't. Oh, I got chills. We got to have this deep, so that way when he comes and says, "Oh, Drake, it's written, buddy," you can say, "Oh no, <laughs> this, I know this what's is written. really what's written." Let me tell you what's written. He's the father of lies. He'll, yep. he'll twist that. Thing. Yep. And see, and here's the scary part too. And this came from the Holy Spirit, man. Sometimes Nathan. We got people that's halfway trained with scripture. That's yep. right. We got people that know scripture, but they don't understand scripture. Yep. So when the devil comes and tries to use that propaganda, he knows, okay, well, I'm going to go attack. I'm going to just use you for an example, mm -hmm. Nathan. Not you're, you're not this way, but the devil could go up to Nathan and say, Hey, Nathan, you know, the scripture says this, but if you don't understand what the context and what mm -hmm. it means, it can be used against, against you. you. And we need to understand the scripture so the devil can't use it against us. Then we can be like Jesus and use scripture the real way to use it on him, boy. Yeah. You know, oh there, my there's, gosh. There's, you know, there's some people that take and want to use certain kind of scriptures. Boy, Jason. Yeah, they still feel good. Yeah. Jason, let me, let me tell you what they are. You may tell you. Hypocrite. We just said it earlier. <laughs> we just said they have a form of godliness, yeah. but they lack like the, the power God. thereof. Oh Where's that power? Where's that power? Right yes. there, son. Yes. Right there. That's where the power's at. Guys. Get deep. That's where it's real. We've only got through 13 verses. <laughs> hey. This is some good stuff. It, it, is. Good it stuff. is. Now, do you see why the devil fights us so hard to read the word? Because yep. he knows God will begin to reveal and yes, put yep. things on your heart and yes, spirit. Sir. Yep. Wow. Yep. But may I tell you why this, that, this is where this is where this is where Jesus why he wants you free. He wants he wants Drake, he wants Jason, he wants Nathan. He wants yeah. us freed up. He don't want us to focus on he don't want Nathan to focus so much on Nathan I can't tell somebody about him. If I if all I'm doing is worried about Nathan and I can't I can't God I just can't get it right. I can't get God is declaring I have made you righteous. I have put my spirit inside of you Preach, son. son. I have put my spirit Preach. inside of you. Now go, go and tell them, <laughs> go and tell them what I did for them, son. Go. That's what he's telling us to do. Yeah. And I, go and make I, disciples. yeah, go make disciples. Just like we've been talking about. Yeah. Go make disciples. How can I make a disciple if I can't even, I don't even know if I'm right. <laughs> Come on. Nate. Hey, so hey. we got to get on, down Nate. in this and get secure. We got to find security. Yeah. It's not yeah. about, it's not about a, it's not about a, a religion. It's not about a denomination, but we got to find security in Jesus. Where did Jesus ever say, I've came to make Christianity? Can you find it? No, you cannot. You did, where, where did he ever say, Hey, I'm going to, I mean, obviously he gave us a new covenant, but where did he ever say, I'm making new rules for you to follow? Because this thing is all about building that relationship. Yep. To be trained and to move forward. Yep. He didn't come to start all this stuff. He came to secure us and empower yep. us yep. so we can go make a difference of people yep. that need freedom. <clears throat> and that's just like, you know, some of the other part, empowering women, empowering them with, with security so they can feel 
they can feel safe enough to go tell somebody about you. I mean, yeah, this right. this thing can go a million different ways. You that's know, right. it's, it's 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 uh, it's powerful, son. Yes. Powerful. Yes. I, I get I get I get periodic excited and giddy about talking about it. Cause oh, oh my I gosh, do too. Yes, sir. <laughs> I do too. Hey, so yes, let's, let's get back. Hey, to we, we, uh, we we didn't finish uh, verse fourteen. We didn't. So let's Man, just we didn't even get to verse finish. 14. Verse fourteen. Okay. Hey, the Holy Ghost doesn't go over, son. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds, so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Mm -hmm. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people. So that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sins they had committed under the first covenant. Now, Nathan, I want to stop you there, and uh, you know, I, I want you to comment on this because you brought this out earlier, and it was so good. Can you explain to the audience what it means when it says that Jesus is the mediator? So, in the first covenant, the mediator was Moses, because when they went to Mount Sinai, Moses was the one that went between God's people and God, God. Himself. Mm -hmm. He went up on the mountain. That's where he got the commandments. That's where God gave him the direction to build the tabernacle, the holy of holies, the most holy, all that stuff. Told him how to build the furniture, told him everything. So everything, those people, everything they related to God in came through Moses. So now, mine and your mediator is Jesus. And the book, the book of Hebrews goes into, you know, Jesus is better than Moses, a better mediator. This new covenant is built on better promises, you know, and he gets into all that. And we can, we can, we'll go there. We'll get there. You know, <clears throat> let's see. Where was we at? Verse 16. Verse 16. Well, starting verse 16. Let's see. Okay. Now, when someone leaves a will, this is powerful. Oh, I can already <laughs> tell. When we, someone we leaves a will. We didn't even get this far in our Bible study. <laughs> oh my goodness. When Ooh. someone leaves a will, it's necessary to prove that that person, the person who made it is dead. The will goes into effect only after the person's death. While the person who made it is still alive, the will cannot be put into effect. You remember how the other day <clears throat> when me and you was talking about Jesus and I told you Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John okay. are in the New Testament, but the new covenant hadn't began yet. Yeah. You remember course, that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because Jesus' yeah, blood hadn't said, shed. Yeah. He hadn't he hadn't died. He wasn't, he wasn't at atonement quite yet. Yeah. He 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 wasn't he, he wasn't there yet. He hadn't he hadn't died yet. So just like that's what it's saying when a person's uh it says now when someone leaves a will, it is necessary to prove that, that person who made it is dead. The will only goes into effect only after the person's death. So <clears throat> when when it's talking about the scripture before that, uh, what was it at? It's about 16. Mm, it says, that's why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people so that all who are called can receive the internal, the eternal inheritance. Yeah. Because, and it's talking about your inheritance, you know, it only goes into effect after, you know, Jesus died. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah his yeah. death. So. so we're living in that yeah. world. Yeah. So. so that is why even the first covenant was put into effect with the blood of an animal. For after Moses had uh, read each of God's commandments to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats along with water and sprinkled both the book of God's law and all the people using hyssop branches and scarlet wool. Um, boy, I bet you there's something in there. I don't know it, but I'm telling you, there's something in there. Mm. Hyssop branches and scarlet wool. If that right there ain't, if, if that right there ain't foretelling what's coming, mm. <clears throat> you understand what I'm saying? It's foreshadowing Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, but I guarantee you, hyssop branches. We can figure that out and talk about that too. Then he said, the blood confirms the covenant God made with you. And in the same way, he sprinkled blood on the tabernacle and everything used for worship. In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, nothing, uh, there is no forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's why the tabernacle and everything in it, which were copies of things in heaven, 
had to be purified by blood of animals. But the real thing, the real things in heaven had to be purified with far better sacrifices than the blood of animals. So that's the reason why it required Jesus and he went to the one up there. And over and over and over, you know, just reading through this, you'll keep hearing it over and over. He's trying to get these people to understand yep. that well, Christ went to the one up there because he's fitting yeah. to go right back into it again, you know, yeah. the tabernacle and in heaven. Think about who the audience for Hebrews is, right? Mm -hmm. So Paul's trying to relate to their minds. Hey, like we would have told for sins with animals. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to show them there was a sacrifice yep. that is he really was, eternally better yeah. than an animal. This, this book was, you know, written or this letter was written to, and that's something else is that people, you know, have a hard time. They don't have a hard time. They just don't understand. If you, have, you have to try to figure out, you have to put yourself here and try to understand who this was written to mm -hmm. because it was written to someone else for mine and your benefit. Yes. yes. So. He was writing to Jewish people. He was trying to convince them that you are under a new covenant. You are not under the law anymore. You don't have to do this stuff. You don't not not you don't have to do this stuff, but you don't have to go make blood sacrifices. Yep. You don't have to do keep all these holy days and all this other stuff. So so twenty-four uh says uh for Christ did not enter into a holy place made with human hands. We've done seen that already mm -hmm. earlier. Sure. <clears throat> which was only a copy of the true one in heaven. He entered into heaven itself to appear now before God on our behalf. Yep. And he did not enter heaven to off. Oh, here we go. Here it goes. Son. Here it goes. This is uh -oh. it right here. Here we go. <laughs> 25. And he did not. I'm going to read this. He did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again. Like the high priest here on earth who enters the most holy place year after year with the blood of an animal. Mm. If that had been necessary, Christ would have had to die again and again ever since the world began. Mm. But now, once for all time, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. <laughs> Tell you why, man. Really, why can you comment on that to make people understand that even more? <laughs> I mean, like that is black and this, white, man. Th this gets into what what I mean. You commented on earlier, you know, I, and and maybe you know I don't want to get hit. I'm not trying to get hits, but this sometimes can be controversial. What I'm about to say yeah. is sometimes I don't I don't have a problem with pe people asking for forgiveness constantly, as long as their mindset is understanding that I am secure i am forgiven if you ask for forgiveness because you think every day you know you're no longer forgiven yeah. then that means every day you ask for forgiveness jesus has to go back he has to die again and die again go back into the holy holy of holies again in heaven and do every bit of that again and you're reading right here plain as day black and white that to offer himself again and again like the uh like the high priest here on earth who enters the most holy place year after year with the blood of an animal. If that had been necessary, Christ would have to die again yeah, and again. And again. You and again. are forgiven. And it's yeah. done when he said it's finished on the cross. It didn't mean, it didn't mean half of the way. He didn't mean 99%. So 99.9. He, he didn't mean none of that. When he said right. it is finished, I stand on it as hey, done. Okay. It's like fin ished, right? There's an ED at the end of that finished. word. He didn't say he finished. Yep. Or he said he finished. There's an ED at the end. Not finishes. Yep. yep. Finished. He, did, he didn't he didn't come to continue to finish. Yeah. ED at the end. And Nathan, I do want to comment this so the audience understands. Guys, you know, um, there was only one time a year that the priest would have to go and make sacrifices on behalf of the people and their sins. So what this is powerful is Christ is our high priest. You're high priest. Mm -hmm. The people that's running the media for us tonight, they're high priest. So when the Bible says he went, or like it says the high priest on earth would enter the most holy place year after year with the blood of an animal, Christ is the high priest and he gave up his blood so that he don't have to die over and over and over. You can be set free and move forward with him and his will and his plan. Amen. And just as each person is destined to die once and after that comes judgment. I'm going to pause you right there. I'm going to pause uh, you right there because I want to speak to our Hindu folks here. Okay. Uh, so look, this says, and just as each person is destined to die once. How many times do we die, Nathan? 
once. Jason, how many times did we die? You already got it held up, son. Once. Hey, there's one way to heaven, and you die one time. So you better remember that we die once. Um, and again, sometimes I think as sinners, as people that don't have our hearts and mind where it needs to be, yep. we can wishfully think, okay, maybe I'll come back and something yeah. else. Yep. But, you know, <laughs> if you ain't coming back with Jesus, <laughs> son, you ain't coming back. You, got you know right. what I'm saying? You got that right. And just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes judgment, so also Christ died once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again not to deal with our sins because they're already dealt with. Remember when I told, remember when you talk? It's controversial and it's hard to wrap your brain around. But, well, hey, but before you go, you remember what, like, guys, so we, we was not able to go live last Sunday. Okay. And that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. The Holy Spirit gave out a message and this was not a man prophecy. This was a God given Holy Spirit prophecy. Okay. If you don't know what that is, just check our live streams. You'll see it almost every service. The Holy Spirit, and I'm giving you some some confidence, Nate, to stay where you are and where we're going with this. Mm -hmm. But God said anything controversial is against his word. And we're coming at you tonight with the word of God. So there's nothing controversial that is in this word of God. Mm, right. God said, if you go against me, then you're controversial. Yeah. So, guys, this may be controversial to you, but it is not controversial to this word of God, to that word of God, because it's all the same. There's nothing controversial when you can back it up with scripture. Yep. But all right, Nate, spit it out, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back to 27 and start right there. He, just okay. six persons destined to uh, die once, and after that comes judgment. So also Christ died once for all time as mm. a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, but he will not deal with our sins. He dealt with them already. It's done. And I mean, you, I've, you've heard me say it, and it's hard to wrap your brain around. And this can be twisted in a million different ways. Yeah. But sin is no longer the problem. Yeah. Unbelief. Unbelief is. If you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. That's taken mm -hmm. care of. Yeah. E.D. E yeah. Man. It's e finished. Behind. We need to it's get finished. a t-shirt made that says E.D. And on the back, put finish. You know how you was telling me that, uh, I think it's your uncle, right, Uncle Matt? Mm -hmm. Your uncle Matt made this thing. It's got all this like Jesus stuff, like reminding you who you are in Christ. We need to get. I got one you has, a word. We I already got a shirt. I already got a shirt with it. You ready? It's 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 my daddy's shirt from when he when he got diagnosed with cancer. What does it say? Tel to tell us that. Well, all right. Well, well, break that word down for me. It is finished. Oh wow! But see, but the word finished has an ed <laughs> on it. I'm telling uh -huh. you, man. We need to go through God's word. You know, mm -hmm. and like we can even make different shirts, like a King James shirt and an LT shirt. We ain't doing an NIV. We're not doing that one. <laughs> okay. And if you understand the Bible, you know what I'm talking about. But we need to go find different words that have it that has an ED on it that points mm -hmm. to salvation being finished. Yep. Not currently in progress. Yeah. <laughs> not currently in progress, but uh -huh. been Ished. And uh so like that's just a side topic. Yeah. Jason, you know about my t shirt dreams. <laughs> I'm Every on the day. phone with these two and I'm all the time Every coming day. up with t shirt designs. <laughs> but um but yeah, so um man, he came and um he will come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are waiting on him. And uh Nate, you know, you said it's controversial that sins are dealt with, but the problem is unbelief. He said, Blessed are you who believe on me. Right. Not blessed are you who are no longer sinning, because really when you think about sin and believing on Jesus, they should be married. We just talked about our spirit is Jesus's mm -hmm. spirit. Yep. So Nate, correct me if I'm wrong, but if we have Jesus's spirit on the inside of us, we get our mind geared with our spirit and we get logged in. Are you going to be producing sin like that? No, you're going to mm -hmm. be producing righteousness. Because the holiness. righteousness that's inside of your spirit comes well, out. It, it comes will out. be released. It comes out. So it's not controversial to say that. Uh -uh, it's absolutely not. Matter of fact, Paul said, because of grace, should we continue to sin so grace can continue to increase? The Bible explicitly says no, because your mm -hmm. heart's not in the right place. Yep. Matter of fact, Nate, one time you gave a beautiful illustration. You said when you and Chelsea got married and you said, I do. Okay. That is a covenant. That yep. is a marriage that you and Chelsea. It, that take. is a replica. We are the, we're, we, what, what are we called? The bridegroom? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yes. And he's yep. coming back for us and he's coming back for a spotless bride. Matter of fact, it says yep. he's coming again to bring salvation to those waiting on him. That's we're mm -hmm. his bride. So when me and Chelsea said I do, I didn't say, Ah, right, girl, I'm going to do what I want to now. I'm going to cheat on you. <laughs> I'm gone. Hey, we married, I'm gone. Sales, if you're watching, I didn't tonight, say I'm that. Sorry. When I when when we said our vows, we you know, 
I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna, I'm through thick, through thin, through sickness and in health, through all this stuff. I, I made a choice. You know what I'm saying? We made a choice and <clears throat> that's, that's the, that's the model of you and Jesus. Yeah. And see, and here's like model I, of I, I wanna, salvation. Yeah. See, I, I want to touch on this too. And I'm going to go back to your, um, point there is, um, you know, and I was even talking with Chelsea about to stay on the phone, but you know, I, I think sometimes, and this was even for me, I had to repent, you know, because repent means to change your mind on something, right? To turn, to change your mind. I had to repent because I always thought that grace, I, I kind of got frustrated with grace and I had to repent for that because I was on TikTok one time and I kept seeing these people and like, if there's really this one guy in particular, I'm not going to call him out by name. That's just not who I am, but he literally made a statement because of God's grace, you can go watch pornography every single day. You could get drunk every single day. And he was pretty much patting this stuff on the back because of grace. And Mm -hmm. I had to repent because that's not what the Bible teaches what grace is. And for you watching at home, I want you to picture this in your mind. I'll try and throw a graphic on there if I can get it made. But the Bible says, and Paul wrote that if you're not under Jesus, you're under the law. You're literally like, if you can imagine, if I wrote the word the law, you're under the law. But what Jesus did was put us under grace and grace is higher than the law. So we're taking ourselves and putting us under grace, but there's an empowerment there that takes place. So just so you guys don't take this and put it on YouTube and even get the wrong idea, can you continue living in sin after receiving grace? No. If the, if your mindset is, hey, I'm fixing to continue living in sin because so of this grace, I got, I got, I got something to add to you. Paul, to Paul, it. let me, I, I didn't catch it in right here in Galatians like I need to, but this is the deal. Okay, we're sitting right here and we're reading all this powerful stuff. Yes, it's heavy. Yes, it's, it's our heavy. spiritual mirror. It's yep. it's heavy in here, right? Mm. We're reading all this. We're learning. Think about yep. what we've done, figured out right here. All the spiritual, you know, the spiritual maze we've Awareness, just figured yeah. out right here. Uh, now, understanding exactly how mu- what he did for you. How could you, man? Paul said, "How can you? Yeah. How can you continue? Yeah." How knowing this truth, yeah. you've spent four how how long four hundred fifty years under the bondage of law, having to keep these rules and do these sacrifices and all this, and now here comes Jesus, who's delivered you from this. How the can the sunsets free, Natus? Free indeed. I just want to. How, add can, how can you continue? How can you? Yeah. So what Paul? I think what Paul was getting at. If you understand the gospel. If you understand the nearly too good to be true news, <laughs> I like if it, you son. understand that, how can you continue? Yeah, how you, how can mean, you? And I tell you, if you can, then you haven't had true grace. There's there's a misunderstanding somewhere. Then you yep. don't have God's grace. Yep. It, exactly. Because your heart. Okay. And, and, you, and you just said, whenever you and Chelsea, whenever you told Chelsea, I do. Nate, did, did you look at Chelsea and say, okay, I do. And I can't wait to cheat on you now because we're Mm-mm. married. Mm-mm. That's not how it works. Like no. you can't say, all right, when you no. married Gina. Because, because we understood what the we were doing. You un- we understood we're coming into covenant. Boy. And we understood what Chelsea, <laughs> I understood what my wife was giving up for me and what she understood what I was giving up for her. Oh, we right. had an understanding with each other. That's right. We come into covenant. I like how you said understanding. Mm-hmm. Underline that word in your mind. Understanding. understanding. Because yes. when you understand God's grace, it isn't just the you can have yeah, all the knowledge. Point. You can have all the knowledge you want, but if you do not have understanding mm. of it, just we talked, we said it earlier. You know, that's how the can, devil can twist. You. Yep, yep. That's, that's how the devil can twist you yep. because you can. Now, you can have Jesus a, was God, right? You can he, have a, he is the Word, but yep. because Jesus knew Scripture and understood Scripture, when Scripture was twisted in His face, mm-hmm. it was not able to work because He. Understood. Why would the devil even try that? Because it says he is the word. Well, what? I don't even think it was technically written yet. But I that mean, does, that doesn't make it not true. No, no, no. It's 100% true. Yeah. Matter of fact, he was with Jesus before we were, yeah. bro. Yeah. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so he knew, he yep. knew, he probably knows some stuff mm-hmm. we don't even know now. Yep. He knows some stuff that ain't even recorded yep. in scripture. But that, that, that's in itself, that's Why powerful do you think he to me. so hard. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He's after our mind. Yes. Because yes, if he can get us defeated, if he can get us bogged down on, on some insignificant little thing about Drake that God's grace has done said, son, I took every bit of it from you. It's, uh, it's, 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 I took it and nailed it to that cross, Drake. Yes. I need you to, what? I need you, what? I need you to see this 
I need you to see that it's nailed to that cross. And, and I need you to go tell everybody else what I've done for them. Yes. That's where we so got to So we can to get. pull them out with us. We can pull them out with us. We can, we can share it with them. Yeah. Yeah. But ain't and, that the beautiful part about it though? I think sometimes people, cause it's religious spirits. I think sometimes they kind of get, uh, cause, yeah. but man, how could you when that is such amazing news and it comes straight from scripture, you know, cause Paul wrote like what 85% of the New Testament mm-hmm, right. and probably a little bit more if we can attest who wrote Hebrews, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, but in all seriousness <clears throat> though, I mean, dude, they were dealing with the law and the covenant change and Paul was trying to get these people to understand truly what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah. If we, and if you can fathom that, yeah. Yeah. You will be free. Yeah. You, now, you, man, you, the truth, Nathan, will do what? Set you free. The truth will set, set you, you free. free. What was Jesus? He was full of truth and grace. Grace, grace and, truth. and truth. Yep. And the truth has set you he free. He said he was the way, the truth, and the life. Mm-hmm. Why would Jesus tell people that had the law, had the rules, they knew exactly what they had to do to get to heaven? Why would he say, no, I'm the way. I'm the only because way. He fulfilled yeah. I'm, I'm the only way. He was talking to Jewish people that knew the law. They knew Moses. They knew every rule they had to keep down to the T. It was in their culture. Everything, everything that they live by, Jesus said, Mm-mm, I'm the way. You got to put your faith in me. Why would it? He would tell Jewish people that when, you know, here we are, we talk about all this stuff about what we need to do and. And, and what we got to do to stay right and this and that when these people had it for 450 years and Jesus and nobody could feel it. Oh, I mean, obviously it's mm-hmm. Jesus, but yeah. no fleshly yeah. person born of a mom and a daddy could fulfill the laws. Mm-hmm. How many laws are there, man? Like six something born? See, I can't remember exactly. Cause I know, wait, one too many. Yeah. <laughs> one yeah. too many. That's a t-shirt design. Yeah. That is a t-shirt design. One too many. See, I want to go on the chat routine. I tell you Let's what. Go. I tell you what. If y'all ain't feeling what I'm feeling or they feeling when you're watching this, <laughs> Nathan, I ain't. you need to get right here. <laughs> you need to get That's on your knees I... in your prayer closet and you need to get back in this right here. But I'm telling you, this is powerful. Because if I speak this in tongues, just mute my mic. <laughs> mute my mic. Hey, I man, so man. man, I, I I'm prayed, I prayed I've for something changed. like this for a long I'm telling you, I prayed for something like this for a long time. God, give me the opportunity to let me, let me, let me, I just read through the Bible. And let my, let my understanding help them and let, let put, put it all together and, and, and find him. Be seek what you ask for, son. Seek. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm, I've been ready. I've been getting ready. God told me, uh, God told me uh, several weeks ago, right when we first started coming, you know, I was in a truck and I was like, listen to a song that's been on, been in mind and her heart since we, you know, kind of had our little awakening, you know, years ago, uh, secret place mm-hmm. by Phil Wickman, you know, uh, and some people may not understand this. Religious people may not, but <clears throat> religious plain, people they, they missed the point on a lot. Nathan. A lot plain of as day, <laughs> plain as day, sitting in my work truck. Plain as day, God said, Nathan, I've had you in my secret place, and I and that's what I've been. I've been consuming this right here. I ain't, it ain't been perfect. I ain't been perfect, but I've been consuming this and trying to gain understand i've been looking for him i needed the truth but you know nathan and and, and i'm not trying to like hype you up because i only want to hype up jesus but i do mm-hmm. want to say this because it is kind of interesting came to my mind you know and i'm not comparing you to jesus by no means so like i don't want i don't want the audience that's what it either but you know god had to protect jesus mm-hmm. he had to take jesus out of his land mm-hmm. and i think what god wants us to do sometimes when he's trying to prepare us for our ministry because mm-hmm. he was preparing jesus for his ministry how to pull yeah. him out you know, of Judea and all that to, to get him out because they were trying to come kill him. And if you would have went, then I really feel like you would have been killed and slandered if God mm-hmm. didn't pull you out of where you needed to be. Yep. If God didn't put you in the secret place he was trying to put you, you would have been spiritually killed and slandered if yes, God right. didn't take you out and put you in the secret place. You know, and what hit my mind, like hit, what hit my like mind it. when you first said, you know, I don't want to compare you to Jesus. The thing about it is, is what I've, what I've been trying to do over the past several years, renewing my mind constantly. Remember I told you it's his spirit. Yes. Yes. So as I renew my mind, the more of him comes out, the more of yeah. his virtue, the more of everything. So, of so it is yeah. when you, when you renew your mind on this, it's yeah. him that's coming. It's him that's reaching out and touching people. That's yeah. right. It's him that's reaching yes. out and touching yeah. somebody's soul, yeah. which that's is right. that. Remember I told you I could touch your physical body, but yes. I could touch your soul too yes, by what I sure say, can. by what I sing to you. That's the reason why we worship. That's the reason why I was talking about when you get into the church and worship, your soul 
is is you, you're you're singing to yourself and singing to people around you. You're you're lining your soul up with with what's in your spirit, and then yep. it bleeds over, comes and I, out. And I've, I've heard this too. It's, it's 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 been a while since I've heard it, but praise is what you do, but worship is who we are. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's strong. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. That yes, is strong. Sir. That is yeah. powerful. Yeah. It's powerful, man. Yeah. It's powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, praise is more than a performance. Yep. yep. All right, let's, let's, let's hit chapter 10. Man. All right. This is deep right here now, boys. <clears throat> you got your waiters on? Uh-huh. You got your waiters on? Oh, my God. See the boots on. Chapter 10, son. I got some of these memorized, buddy. Hey. Oh, man. Let's hit it, baby. The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow. It was a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have would have stopped. So he's saying if a blood of a bull and a goat could have provided the perfect cleansing, then they would have just stopped. They would have done one and it'd been over with. Okay, well, we're done. Yeah. Um, if they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped for the worship, for the worshipers would have been purified once for all time and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings. You have given me a body to offer. You are not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written about me in the scriptures. So we can go back to that right here just a minute. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going back. Hey. <laughs> but instead, those sacrifices actually reminded yes. them of their sins. See that hit me, because ain't that the complete opposite of what Jesus mm. does? Does not mm. remind you of those sins. The Holy Spirit, he came to convict the world of their sins and, and the believers of their righteousness. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm just going to sit here for a minute. Man. I got to let that You got to sit here and stew on it a minute. I got to let that marinate. Son. You got to let it marinate. My goodness. Jason, we going back, cuz. <laughs> cuz, I tell you what, man. So, when you get some of this, there ain't no coming back. You'll fall, you'll fall so deeply into this and you'll say, my God, I've been, how defeated have I been? I can, I can, I can live free. I can, I can go. I can go and do and tell people and not be beat up and 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 so uh just defeated. Yeah. Yeah. Man, and, and, and think about how many people are dealing with that, Nathan. And yeah. Jason. Mm-hmm. How many yeah. people like like tonight, you're probably feeling defeated right now. And but God's promise is that you don't have to stay this way because he has enough power to mm-hmm. wipe that clean. But mm-hmm. it's important that you understand that because God can offer something all day. Yeah. But if you don't take what he's offered, you will never receive what he's trying to give. So mm-hmm. if you're tonight, tonight, if, if you're maybe I just can't get free, I just can't get free. I think you're the problem because it is clear that God said, you know, hey, I can give you a new heart and a new conscience. So mm-hmm. you need to let go of that conscience. And receive what God has truly said about you. Yep. Gosh. Yep. Boy, mm. shall we keep going? <clears throat> I know. I, I got. I got. I got to say this, and that goes along with. I had a. I had a prophecy over me one time, to where, like when I was talking about earlier, I, I was had so much dead weight and down, and but I had a prophecy over me, and it said that God said. That you're more disappointed in you than I am. God said you're more. Dis- I'm more disappointed in me than he is. Mm. Boom, son. The Lord would say, tell him, stop being so hard on yourself. 
For you get more disappointed at you than I do, says the Holy Ghost. I want you to rest in me. I want you to rest in me. That kind of just that kind of just puts it on out there, don't it, my boy? Then he just all of a sudden said, "I want you to rest in me." Mm-hmm. <laughs> boy, you hey, <laughs> real son, son. Let me tell you something. You own to something, buddy. Man. You own to something. Man. You own to something right there now. Hey, but does God? And what what did Jesus? Me? What did Jesus say about his yoke? What did he say? It is easy and light. His burden is light. What? Yes. His yoke is easy. Yes. And his burden is light. What so. What kind of burden was the law? Oh, I was heavy, son. Matter of fact, it was so heavy. He had to who was Jesus cross. telling that to? He was telling telling to the Jewish people who had what the law. So he was telling. So they Jewish had people. condemnation. They, yeah, they had, con- he, and he's telling them, if you'll just put your faith in me, it's my easy. yoke is light. It's easy. My burden's light. There's none of this big requirements. There's none of all this all this stuff that that actually doesn't do anything for you. Oh man, Nate, Nate, hold on. So you're telling okay. So this is literally what Jesus just did. And it kind of, and don't get me wrong, I knew this, but it's just the way I'm about to put it out. <laughs> How many laws were there, man? Like six, 600, 600, 13. 13. Like I said, one too many. Yeah. yeah. But man, the law of love, man, will cover all the love law of love. Laws. The law of, oh. the law of liberty and love. Yeah. Dude, no, that, that's the new law that God prophesied in the Old Testament that I will put on their hearts. That's the reason why Jesus talks about, you know, Perfect love and, and uh, you know, love your, what, what's it say? I'm, I'm trying to bring it out. Um, when it says love your, l- love your neighbor, love uh, your brother and sister. As you, you love yourself. Yeah, as you love yourself. That's part of the law of liberty. That's part of the, yeah. that's part of all that. Yeah. Well, if you do that, it takes care of the rest. It takes care of the rest. When you do those things, it handles business, boy. Yep. Well, we own some t-shirt designs tonight, boy. We own some <laughs> handles the business. Designs. Handles the business. Boy, we handle some business out here tonight. I, I've seen it. Thank you, Holy I, I'm going to embellish a little bit on what you was talking about, how about being more discouraged, you know, or however you said it. Disappointed. Being more disappointed in yourself yeah. than I am. You know, I, I had a, I was reading a book one time and the, and the preacher said that God spoke to him and he said, I, Walked outside and I sat down on my porch and he said, and I had, he said, my wife, you know, could never turn away a stray dog. She always, if they come up, she would always keep them, you know. And she said, and he said, this old dog had come up and my wife had kind of took it in. But the dog had been around for months and months and months. And, and, uh, but the dog always approached this guy, crouched down, wagging its tail, scared, like, you know, are you going to hit me? It's like the dog had been abused before. Yeah. And he said, right, right. The dog come up to him. You know how, you know how a dog would do crouch down, like, you yeah. know, leaned over, almost roll over on their belly, you know? And he said, God spoke to him right then and said, I wish you would quit coming to me like that. Man. I wish you would come to me boldly. Come to me like I'm your daddy. Like I'm your father. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah. is also what the Bible says. He put his spirit in us. So crying, father, crying mean. out, Abba Father. Yes. You know. Yes. So, first Christ said, now, now he's referring to what Jesus said above this, because he was saying what Jesus said in That's the right. scriptures above at six and seven. But now Paul's back to telling, breaking this down to people. First Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Nor were you pleased with them. Mm-hmm. God was not pleased with those. Man, I'm thinking about the Cain and Abel, son. <clears throat> Though they are required by the law of Moses. Yes. He was not pleased with them. Then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. Now, Nathan, I want to pause right there because somebody may be saying contradiction alert, contradiction mm-hmm. alert. So... You know, Jesus said no word will pass away, and he was referring to the law. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, and so it'll like, never go away. So, yeah. so, so somebody may say, well, man, be canceled, ain't that putting it away? But really, it will never go away because the law's purpose today yeah. is to show us how filthy we are yeah. and how filthy Jason is, how filthy I am, how filthy you so are. So it was put here so none of us can boast about what we've done. Yep. Just right. like when it, you know, the scripture that talks about Lord, I've cast out demons in your name, and I and He said, "Depart from me, because yeah. I never knew you." Word, but yeah. 
uh, what what was that person saying? That's a very, very extremely scary scripture. Look what I've done. He said, see what I done? have cast out demons in your name. Yes. I have. I have. I have. Mm-hmm. It's not about what Nathan has done. It's all about what Jesus Christ did on that cross. Right. So when That's I get there, it's period. point blank period. There's nothing you can do to, nothing you can do in your own except put your faith in Jesus to please God. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a fact. Let's keep going. Okay. So then he said, look, I've come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read that one more time. Read it again. For God's will was, this is God's will. Yes. The Father's will was for us, you and I, to be made holy. I am made holy. Yes. By the sacrifice of, of the body of Jesus Christ, once and for all. But Nathan, I mean, gosh, I mean, people are going to get so tired of me interrupting you, man. No, but listen, good. the the bottom line is this: but when you are, but when you are holy, was it your will to be holy? No, it was God's God will. will. So right. when you're holy, you know, I gave this analogy to you, and um, I I, I got to give credit to to Brian Griffiths because he did illustrate this to me, and it made a lot of sense. And this is an illustration to say exactly what happened. But if a girl walks in in church with a short skirt on and you've been dealing with lust, mm-hmm. you know, the law says don't commit adultery. You can mm-hmm. look at a woman, you know. Yeah. But Jesus you, took it a step further. Yes. Said even yeah. if you look on a woman, you yep. commit adultery in your heart. Yeah, that's right. So if, if I look at that woman, and even in church or anywhere, and, and, and I lust, but when I receive Jesus and I receive his grace and I understand his word, okay, mm-hmm. What's going to happen is, and I'm not going to put a time limit on it because, again, time mm-hmm. is different. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I can't say when God's going to fully deliver you or fully make you holy or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's going to come a time that same girl with the same skirt can walk by and it won't even cross my mind to mm-hmm. look. And I may even miss, oh, I, I didn't look. I may not even think, oh, I didn't look because it's not me that's not looking. It's what's in me. Spirit in mm-hmm. It is the spirit in me mm-hmm. that Jesus put in yeah. me. It's his spirit what? that enabled me not to look. And how, how does that go back to the same thing? How do, how does that come out? Through belief. Through belief and a renewed mind. And, re- and belief, yes. belief is reading what the spiritual truth is in it's this Bible. It's putting that spiritual mirror, aka the So Bible. if your mind is read up, if, if, if your mind is sharp on this, when something like that comes before your eyes, that righteousness in here, says, that virtue, says, I can't nips it. it in the butt just like yes. that. Yep. Just like it. It circumcises it. Yep. Cuts it off. Cuts it away. Now, that's not to say you are you are a male. We are all three males. If there's anything that the male specimen deals with, most of the time it's lust. If we you know let our men just type them in right now in the comments. <laughs> we can we can go let's 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 fast forward this now. Let's say Drake was read up. No, I, yes, I'm sir. just thinking this is a possibility. Now we can we can hash it out and talk about. It. Yeah. Let's say Drake's read up. Short skirt walks by, ain't nothing to it, son. You read up. That's that spirit boils out of you. All right. Six years down the road, life circumstance happens. The devil happens. Things happen. You get you get a little rusty. You get a little. You, you know, your mind's not exactly perfectly renewed. You're still saved. Your your faith is still in Jesus, but your mind doesn't remember. Your soul was not renewed. Your mind is not renewed on who you are and what's on the inside. It doesn't change his love for you if no, you sure don't not. read this Bible, but it might change your love for him. Yes. If you keep this on the inside of you, you he his love, your love for him and his love will be at the forefront of your mind. All the time. That's right. right. So if, if if you can stay there, I think you can do just like we talked about. But if it's not, if you if you you get away from this and you don't stay here, we don't stay at the feet of Jesus reading His Word, then that's when things like that can happen. And I think you know that's when your eyes stay a little too long. You know what I'm saying? And yep. it becomes. Yep. It, and if you don't, if you don't go and renew your mind and say, "Whoa, I just had a glimpse of something I used to deal with." 20 years ago, and now I got to, and I seen it pop back up. I got to renew my mind on what this says about yes. who I am, yes. who Jesus is, and what he did for me. That you are delivered from that. 
that's what goes back to what we talk about, how if you don't know that you have been delivered and your spirit is 100% free, free perfect, <clears throat> as good as Jesus is, as perfect as Jesus was, <clears throat> you, I mean, you can, if you don't know that, your mind can tell you all kinds of things. Your mind can tell you, no, I'm not. Just like some of the stuff we've been talking about and dealing with with different people, you know, if they don't understand that, their mind goes elsewhere and they look for answers elsewhere when the answer is right here. Yep. Right here. Yep. I want to keep going? Oh, yes, sir. Under oh, the, finish out this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> under the old covenant, the priest stands and the ministers, hold on, I messed up. Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. Nope. <clears throat> but our high priest offers our high priest. Our high priest. Who's the high priest? Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for our sins, good for all time. Not some of the time. Not uh, not part of the time. All time. All the time. Not ten years prior. No. Mm -mm. All time. Where was Nathan Drake's and and Jason's sins when Jesus died on the cross. They Being were 2,000 years in the future, right? Yeah. Yep. Being nailed. If Jesus didn't get forgiveness for you for future sins, then Jason, Nathan, and Drake are not saved right now. Yeah, we don't right. have forgiveness for our sins. Yeah. Because right. he died 2,000 years prior. That's right. Oh, uh, let's see. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. Now we done we done hit this right here one time, but boy, we gotta hit it again, son. We gotta hit it again. Hey, we didn't hit it in front of them, so let's hit it. Uh so when Moses got the direction on how to build the the tabernacle and all this, if you go look, there's no chairs anywhere. Mm -hmm. The job was never done. Yeah. Every year, all every year, everything had to be done to a T, and every year, year after year, they had to offer sacrifices. We just read that. Over and over and over and over and over. The job was never done. When Jesus got on that cross and he said, it is finished. It is finished. And he went into the one, the real one in heaven, not the replica on earth. He went into the real one on heaven, in heaven. And when he got done, he sat down at the right hand of the father. Because you only sit down when you're done. Hey, the job's done. There right. was never any seats in the in the tabernacle on earth. Because the job was never done. So when he sat down at the right hand of the Father, that means his job was done. It was finished. Yeah. Once and for all. Let's see. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. For he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. You skip 13, brother. Did I? My bad. Let's yeah, see. I, I've been reading my mind. I, I, I <laughs> Let's go back then. now. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool, footstool under his, under his feet. Mm. Made a footstool. Yep. Mm. I know where my enemies are. <laughs> you Ooh, right. Son, let me tell you something. The next one is powerful too. Mm. If you can grasp what it's going to tell you. He's done said it over and over and over, but he puts it a different way. For by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. Oh. Read that again. <laughs> For by that one offering. For by that one, one time. Offering. One. Jesus once and forever. He forever made perfect. He made you and me. Perfect. Perfect. But then he follows that and says, those made perfect those who are being made, made holy. holy. Who made you holy? Mm -hmm. Because if Drake tries to be holy, what is that? Self-righteousness. Self exactly. So who made you holy? Jesus. Jesus' the spirit makes you holy. Yes, that's right. But that was only accessible to the cross. That mm -hmm. sacrifice. He didn't sacrifice. I mean, we're wasting our times. Yep. Or wasting our time. Yep. I got that one memorized there. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. For by one sacrifice he made 
That's yeah, perfected us. That's a whole t-shirt design. There ain't no catchy slogan. That's Here just we power. are again with the t-shirt. That's just power. That's not a slogan. That's power. <laughs> <clears throat> and then the Holy Spirit testifies about this too. This is the new covenant I will make with my people. On that day, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Hey, you're about to skip the best part. What? Son, remember, remember you skipped earlier? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, you're yeah. about to miss the whole point of chapter two. I know. The one I was ready to get to, too. <laughs> I skipped that one, man. You would have gone, oh, hey. Chelsea, I swear, I just, it was sitting there somewhere. <laughs> Did Drake cut that out in the edit? Did Drake cut hey. that part out? He's a false teacher. <laughs> I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, man, this is powerful, too. I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. I will it's never again away. remember. Their, that's why he's, he said in his word that I will cast them as far as the east is from the west. How far is the east is from the west? I was just about to ask how far is that? It never ends. Never ends. It's a circle, my man. Yeah. Never it's ends. Circle. You got it. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. So it's done. Cuz, and ain't you glad? Because you know how bad this church will be smelling right now, cuz. Cuz I wouldn't be able to be in here right now. Yeah. I would not be in here, but it would smell no. too much like goats for me. Yep. So, uh, hey, that's a good goat cheese, huh? Y'all, y'all ready to be done or y'all want to keep going? We can switch over to chapter three right here because it talks about Jesus is greater than Moses. Gets back into that. We can go all kinds of different directions. I tell you what, let's 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 flip on Jesus being better than Moses because you know people probably heard that and they're like, "What yeah. does that even mean?" Jesus is so greater now, than Moses. Yeah, yeah, so we're going we're we're going back to chapter three, just because it's where we we took off at. Yes. You know, this is in Hebrews <clears throat> chapter three. Yep, yeah. and we're gonna get into chapter four, which is the promised rest for God's people, yeah. which is what we were just talking about a while ago. Rest. Getting free, rest, rest. Just getting free. rest, rest in me. Yep, well, Jesus is greater than Moses. That's the title heading. We put that there. Yeah, help, yeah, that's, that's better understand. That's all. But it's what and if you're wondering, about. we are reading at the NLT. Yep. Just if you maybe we're, we're, we're wondering. Yeah. And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God, and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus, whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest, for He was faithful to God, who appointed Him, just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Remember what I said earlier, but is a conjunction that cancels the statement before it. Yes. Right. yes. So when you say, so the, the statement before that was for he was faithful to God who appointed him just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. Yes, sir. Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of truths God would reveal later. He's talking about Moses' work was there to reveal Jesus. Yeah. But Christ, as the son, is in charge of God's entire house. I read that wrong. It says, but Christ, as the son, is in charge of God's entire house. Mm-hmm. And we we our God's we, house. Yes. If we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. Yeah, we're <clears> only God's house if our courage is in Jesus. Yep. Not in what, what I what can is, do. What is, what is the other translation of, of we are God's house? Tabernacle. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we are the church. Yep. Yeah. We are the tabernacle. Yeah. There's no bad. He's not coming <clears throat> back for a building. Yep. That's right. Says, uh, that is why the Holy Spirit says, Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts, as Israel did when they rebelled. When they tested me in the wilderness, there your ancestor tested and tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. So I was angry with them, and I said, Their hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I took a note. They will never enter the place of rest. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving. Turning away from the turning away from the living God, you must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and a hard hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all 
that belongs to Christ. So I w- I'd like to go back right there and, and say something right there. Because you can you can take this, if you don't take this into context, you can turn this into something for us today that is really not. So be careful then, brothers and sisters. Make sure you uh, that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving. Remember when we talked about sin is not the problem, it's, it's unbelief. unbelief. That's right. Turning you away from the living God when... Because unbelief turns you. Yeah, unbelief whenever, turns you away from God. And this is the thing is whenever, whenever whoever wrote this, Paul or whoever it was, when they wrote this, they were talking to Jewish people trying to get them to understand you're under a different covenant now. So they had basically come out from under the old covenant and the law, and now, now they have started to believe in Jesus, that he is the Messiah and he is the Savior. And this is Paul or whoever writing and saying, <clears throat> saying, uh, make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. Mm-hmm. He's not talking about falling in sin and running off and doing whatever. He's talking to people who once believed in the law and, and knew everything about that. And now they believe in Jesus. He's saying, don't, don't fall away and turn away from that. Don't turn away from Jesus. That's right. Yeah. You must warn each other every day while it's still today so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we're faithful to the end, trusting God just as, just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all things that belong to Christ. Remember, it says today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when you rebelled. And who was it that rebelled against God, even though they heard his voice? Wasn't it the people Moses led out of Egypt? Who was who made God angry for 40 years? Wasn't it the people who sinned, whose corpses lay in the wilderness, and whom was God speaking when he took an oath that they would never enter his rest? Wasn't it people who disobeyed him? So we see that we see that because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter his rest. Because of what, Nathan? Because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. Hey, I, I, don't, I don't know if religious people caught that. Can you just say that one more time? They could not enter his rest because they did not believe. What is rest? Jesus. It is Jesus, Peace, right? And, and what grace. does he give? Do what? I said, what does Jesus give? Rest. Rest. I mean, hey, what we just said, his, his burden or his yoke is easy. Yeah, that's right. His burden is light. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Where y'all want to go with it? Y'all ready to be done? Hey, let's, hey, let's, let's finish on a high note. Let's, let's, let's finish on four. Finish on four? Finish on four. Yeah. All right. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. Can you read that one more time? <clears throat> God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you may fail to experience. And, and see, that's, that's where you, that's where we have to be. We have to be, I, you know, we have to get to a place where we're scared that, man, I'm, I'm, I might not be able to give this to people. So that's the reason why we have to, goes back to what we was talking about a while ago. I got, I got to be secure in Nathan. I got to be secure in Jesus and my salvation so I can go give somebody else the same revelation yep. about Jesus Christ so they can enter into that rest. And man, that, that, that's the reason we're up here tonight. I mean, right now it is currently 1102. Now, obviously, I know this is going to be, you know, broadcasted, you know, Monday. Um, and you're going to be, you're not seeing us at 1102, but we would not be up here at midnight if we were not afraid that some people might miss the rest. Nathan, we could be out doing God knows what. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but yeah. we decided to be up here mm-hmm. and carry out his word because, you know, God's promise of inner rest still stands. I want to tell you right now, God's promise. And I'm literally reading this out of his word. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. <clears throat> For this good news. This is good too. Great news. For this good news that God has prepared. This rest has been announced to us just as it was to them, but it did not, it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. Yeah. As for others, God said, well, I don't know. My, how, how do we get in there? Only what? How do we get into the rest? O- only what? Believe, believe on now, Jesus I'm, Christ. Now, I'm not asking what man-made religion says. I'm asking what does the Bible say? The believe. Bible says believe. And did the Bible not say in John 1 that Jesus is the way? Well, he's the way, but he's the word, right? And the word mm-hmm. was with God. Oh, you're and we're, and God. we're receiving yep. his word because yep. Jesus right. inspired this. Mm-hmm. That's right. I mean, you got to believe that. If you don't, yep. you, I mean, you're going against what Jesus taught. Yeah. 
Yep. yep. So Nathan, how do you enter his rest? Believe in him. I mean, you said, well, actually God said it. Let me rephrase that. And, God yeah. said it. Yeah. And, it, and, and even this here, you know, when, when it says believe in, you know, believe on Jesus Christ, you got to remember Paul was talking to, to Jewish yep, people. That's right. That's right. So if you put yourself there, he was talking to people. <clears throat> he was talking to people that knew the law. They already knew what to do. They knew the rules to keep. And he said, no, you have to believe in Jesus. Yeah. So it's not all those rules. It's not all that. It's simply it's not you. It's not you. It's not what because you can when do. You, when you trust you, when you trust your your own righteousness, you talking about messing up. When you believe in, oh my gosh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When you believe in your righteousness, Nathan, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? You're going to sin. Yep. And see, it's crazy because I can already feel the religious spirits against us right now. Yep. Because oh, these nut, these, these these crazy people up here are they're they're up here saying oh, these people up here saying you you can sin or oh, it's not sin that sends you to hell, dude. If that's all you can think about, you're in a total wrong place. Because listen, when you believe in yourself, when you believe in what you do, that leads to sin. Mm -hmm. We're trying to tell you what leads to holiness. Mm -hmm. We're trying to tell you what leads to not sinning, and yep. that is belief in Jesus. When you believe on Him. Like we said at the beginning, his spirit equips you and fills you. When That's you right. rely on your righteousness and the way you fulfill your righteousness is by following this set of rules or, I, you know, ideas yeah. <clears throat> and you're following the law. Yeah. Paul said, if you live by the law, there's no more justification. For you'll sin. be judged by the law. That's right. If you're under the law, you're cursed. Yes. What he said. Yes. Because if, the law only condemns. Yeah. If you, if your only way to relate to God is by keeping a rule. Yes. <laughs> if your only way of relating to God is by keeping a rule. Y'all got that wrote down over there. Y'all got that wrote down somewhere. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> if your only it, way of relating and thinking you are right with God is by keeping some kind of rule, you've missed it. Because it's not about the rule you keep. It's about the relationship with him. The relationship you maintain, baby. Yep. You don't maintain rules, that mm. relationship. That relationship. I ain't going to say it, Jason. I ain't going to say it. That's true. I ain't going to say it, son. My goodness. Mm. My yep. goodness. Okay, let's, we, we got to read some more. <laughs> oh, we gotta, hey, we read where some. we at? Did we even make it off the first page? We, uh, uh, oh, my God. Go to uh, three. Uh, for only we who believe can enter his rest. Mm. Uh, God said, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Why? Why would they never enter his place of rest? Just because of unbelief. Because of unbelief. How many times have you sat in church services and heard the Holy Spirit say, only believe. believe. Only believe. Shed all this other stuff off. And only trust me. Only trust Jesus and what he done for you. Yeah. So just go watch some of our church services. Yep. Even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. So that right there shows you that the whole law, the law was always meant to take us to Jesus. Yeah. Because yeah. that rest that Jesus has given us access to by faith has been there from the get go. That's what it just said. Yeah. Even though this rest has been ready. Since he made the world, we know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But but in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard the good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So God said another time for entering his rest. And that time is today. Today. God announced his God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted today when you hear his voice don't harden your hearts now if Joshua has succeeded in giving them the rest God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come so there's a special rest still waiting for the people of God for all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors just as God did after after creating the world so let us do our best to enter that rest but if we disobey God, as people of Israel did, we will fall. We'll fall out of that rest. Mm -hmm. When you fall out of that rest, guess what? Where do you go back to? 
You go back about the anxiety, depression, just you go back, you go back. Anything that is opposite of peace, right? Yeah. yeah. And man, can you touch on but like when it says if we disobey God? If we disobey God. Yeah. Where let's see. Just like the people of Israel. So let us let us do our best to enter that rest. But if if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall. I think what he's I think what he's talking about right there is uh you know The Father's will is for us to believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. So I think if we if we disobey him by, you know, pushing Jesus off or, or putting it to the back of our mind and not renewing our mind on it constantly, I think that's where you'll I think that's where you'll be you'll be in disobedience. Yeah. And that's 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 the worst place you can ever be. Yeah. Because now there are all these promises we've talked about for God knows how long this thing yep. is. It's it's no yep. longer provided. And this is powerful too. For the word of God is alive and powerful. Amen. It's sharper than the sharpest two edged sword cutting between soul and spirit. Well, look at that. I was about to say, Nathan. Again, we have a soul and a spirit there, don't we, buddy? Yes, sir, we do. <clears throat> Not a mind. Cutting between soul and, soul and spirit. <laughs> now, this Bible, let's read this again because this, this is going to go back to what read we've been again. talking about. Check this out right here. Okay. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than. It's it's sharper than the sharpest two edged sword. It cuts between the soul and spirit. Mm-hmm. You can use this word to differentiate what your conscience is telling you yeah. that you always yeah. done. This is your past, but you can use this word to cut through and say, "No, my spirit is perfect. That, Jesus' spirit is inside of me." That word, that Bible, and you've already said it. That Bible is your spiritual mirror. When you can look at this thing and you're stuck on the past, yep. that's because you see the past. But when you look in that word of God and you use that as your mirror on your life, you will ultimately see that this thing is revealed. That is not who I think I am. That's right. I am who the I am yep. says I, I am. am. Yep. Yes, I believe that's a song. Well, I like that. <laughs> and you talking about the mirror? Here we go right here in the next verse. Uh, hit me with it. <clears throat> it says, uh, cutting between soul and spirit. And between joints and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Yep. Shows us. Because when you when you come to this, it shows you you, you, you see you your see perfect it. spirit. You see it. And at the same time, your mind is renewing on these things. You realize, man, I have been defeated on this stuff. Hey, I, guys, I want you guys to understand what he just said. So sometimes our mind and our spirit, they're not aligned. But what happens is your spirit is already made right through Jesus. That's why we're able to sit here and proclaim that what he did on the cross is enough because he filled you with his spirit. But sometimes our mind can't understand that. And our mind is on the left. Our spirit's on the right with Jesus, on the right hand of the Father with Jesus. That's where our spirit is on the right. But sometimes our mind's on the left. When you get in this word, your mind and your spirit are synchronized and come into one. And here's the thing about it. You have to do this consistently. You can't just renew your mind one time. Nope. And it always it's, be renewed. It's not a single thought that changes your life. It's a it's a process daily, constantly. Yeah, it's a continuation. It's, it's a continual thing. Yeah. yeah. Continual thing. Yeah. 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 Always stay in renewed. Yes, sir. Where y'all want to go with it? Uh we was on verse thirteen. Oh, thirteen. Yep. I don't even remember where we was at. <laughs> Cause I know we went to Holy Ghost. That's where we it at. says nothing in all creation. Is hidden from God. Yeah, he nothing, literally says the anything, anything you do. It's, it's, it's like they say, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> Come on now. Uh-huh. Come that's, on that's, now. that's what it, that's what it's saying. <coughs> yep. You, you can run from, from, from people, but you will never yes, outrun God. Yes, sir. I bet people used to run for you, Jason, before you got saved. Okay. <laughs> Boy. Mm. Before you had that spiritual renewing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one whom we are accountable. And then it goes right back into the end. Goes and back and in. hey, before you read this, guys, hey, listen, it's going to be the last section we read. Christ is our high priest. And again, the high priest would always atone for sins. So, guys, if you don't grasp anything else throughout this entire conversation, if you didn't, that's on you, not us. Um, Christ was our high priest. Let's end on a high note. Yep. So then, since we have a great high priest. A great one. Who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, 
for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Not like that dog. That's not like a dog. Mm -hmm. Nope. Got to come boldly. We can go with all our mess. We can run boldly straight to him. There, there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. You know, and that makes me think of the verse where, you know, uh, Paul wrote, you know, I think it was in Romans 7 or I it's, it's somewhere in Romans. Paul said, in my moments of weakness, I can boast in Christ because mm -hmm. when I'm weak, he makes me strong. That's right. Yep. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this too because it just hit me about grace and mercy. I mean, maybe I can get this right. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. Your unmerited favor. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve. Think about it just a minute. Mercy <laughs> is not getting what you do deserve. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, you do des you deserve you deserve death. You deserve all this stuff that you've caused from your sin. But because of God's gracious love for us, we get we we get what we don't deserve, and that's Jesus, and that's a life to be able to share and and. Isn't it crazy how inverted that sounds? But it's truly not. Mm -hmm. It just reveals that mm -hmm. God is just Almighty. Yeah. Yeah, never. He just he never ceases to amaze you. Yep. No, no, so, man. I'm telling you. Yep. <laughs> grace, Lord. grace is getting what you don't deserve because we didn't we didn't deserve salvation, right? Yeah. Because we're all yeah. sinful beings. Yeah. We all right. fallen yeah. short. So we're getting what we don't deserve. But from His mercy, He's He's not giving us what we do. Yes. And we do deserve. If Hell you take yeah. Jesus away from us, we do deserve. We deserve all the pain We're and sick. all the hurt yes, and everything right. we bring on us and the bed we have to sleep in that we made. We deserve all we deserve all that, but thank God for his mercy. Yes. Yes. Mercy that's and grace. Right. That's right. I mean, I mean, I can't find a, a a better way to close. And you know, tonight as we close, we've dealt with a lot. We've we've dealt with overcoming just your conscience, man. I mean, guys, there's there's never been a time where the enemy has attacked our okay, I mean, I say ours, I'm talking about just in general, the United States, the world. Mm -hmm. There's never been a time where the enemy's been so heavily against our conscience. And if you would just grasp and understand, not know, but understand God's word and his character and his nature, what he promises, what he has to say about things, you can be made whole. And we want you to understand that there is a soul, a spirit, and a body. Okay. And when you understand those three different distinctions, we got to understand what God's done. He's gave you a new spirit and a new heart and a new desire to please him. And if you can grasp that and understand and put your mind and renew it, you got to take that mind that's telling you you're not worthy and you need to, you know, you need to shape that thing and resize it and put it back on God's word and what he has to say about you yep. and your life. Amen. When you think, when you just, when you think you're not worthy and all this, just like we did earlier, you know, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the father and he intercedes for us. It's just like, it also says that we are in Jesus Christ. And it's just like you taking this phone, this is us, and this Bible is Jesus. And you're in him. He seals him. it. He sealed it. He seals it, and he hands it. Once he and says, Father, here, here it is. Now, no, no, can I ask you a question? Watch it. Go ahead. Okay, when, okay can, you, can you hold that up so the mm -hmm. camera can see it? Hey, make sure the camera's on Nate here. When you're inside of Jesus, can you slip and fall? Like, is the phone going to come out of there? Or is that thing secure? I'm secure. There you go. I think he's got. I'm, I'm you're secure. secure because he's got that thing shut. I'm secure because I, I stand on what the what the word of God says. Jesus and I, I has you. Like like, like you got your hand shut on that. Yep. Jesus has yep. you yep. in His hand. My, I'm. I don't want to be built on the sand. No. I want to be built on the firm foundation. Yes, That's sir. right. Yes, sir. I, I want to be built boy. on the firm foundation. So, so, like so whenever, whenever you sing that song Sunday morning, boy, that's that's going to get. <laughs> let, me take, let me take Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> take hey, Shelby and man. This this is where <laughs> I this is where I want to be. I don't want to go. If this is me, I don't want to go and say, "Hey, look what I done. Look what I got. Look at yeah. this." Because when he does, he's going to see something feel filthy and nasty. Because that's what it says. My righteousness, my yeah. righteousness is a filthy rags. When you yeah. get into covenant talks. When you get into covenant talks, <clears throat> when you when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you took your you took your old dirty robe off, 
and Jesus took his off and give it to you. Yes. And that's the reason why that that's what the illustration is. You know, you are in Jesus Christ and that's when you when God looks at you, this he sees Jesus. That's every that's time. Powerful. That's where I want to be. That's yes. where I want to be. That's where I want to be. That's what the word well, that's, declares that's, to you. And that's, that's where so I, good that's where we are. That's where yeah. we are now. That's where right. we are. And that's I'm where we got you. to stay. We yes. got to keep on renewing your mind that this is because this is where I want to stay. And if I can stay here, I can take this and share it with as many people and I don't have to worry and be bogged down in all of Nathan. I can I can go and tell people what he's That's done right. for me. Yep. I love it. I love it. But anyhow, so so guys, man, we, we appreciate you guys for uh for watching. If you are blessed by this, if God has ministered to you, uh we just want to ask if you would share this and get this word out, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your coworkers, and tell them, hey, if you can't get past the burden in your mind. Watch this video and allow the Holy Spirit to work. Because it's not anything we said that's going to set them free. But it's the truth of the, what's it called? Good to be, it's too good to be true it's gospel. The nearly it's too good to be true. The nearly too good to be true gospel. When Paul wrote that word gospel at that point in time, that word was almost a made up word because there was no word to describe it's just how to be good true, my man. the news was. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. Yep. But yeah, so um, Jason, would you like to close this out in prayer? Well, sure. So I tell you what, son, I was going to go back and open up that word. Well, <laughs> hey, but guys, stay tuned. Some more. Hey, guess what? We'll, we'll, we'll be back next Monday. We might just pick <laughs> up right where we left off yeah. next Monday. So, all right, Jason, let's hit it, man. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful night. We thank you for your sweet presence, your spirit to put on us in this room. We pray, God, that this blesses them, Lord. Grip their heart, Lord. Fill them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I pray, God, that you rain down upon their place, God. And we give you all the honor and the glory and the power. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you want to be discipled, make sure you check the description. You can find our link to our digital discipleship. Get into contact with us. If you have a question, comment your question on our digital discipleship page link below. You can find our email. Email us a question. We'll be more than gracious enough to respond because we exist to help you and your questions. May God bless.